Hey, so I'm sure you already noticed the timestamp of the video, but this is a different kind of video you're used to. This is inspired off of a lot of podfix I've read and how I think this Dream SMP community needs a little bit more podfix in their repertoire. So me and Riley or Cute Lemon have decided to put together this. It's a little collab where they wrote, wrote a one shot about a cyberpunk AU and I decided to draw it and read it out for you. So I hope you enjoy. If you do like it, go give their fic some love. It needs it and please, it's good and they're a really good author. And then also consider liking the video and telling me how I did because this is very new to me and was actually very stressful. <laughs> so if you do enjoy this, tell me below that you did because I'm very, I was very nervous about uh, recording a lot of this, so, you know, that would be helpful, boost that confidence a little bit more, you get me, you get me. Uh, there will be warnings in this that is listed right after this segment, so don't worry about it, just look at those warnings, make sure you're all good with those. The drawing does have a bit of blood in it, but overall, I don't think it's that bad, considering other things I've done on this channel, so... Yeah, just keep that in mind. Uh, other than that, I hope you enjoy this fic. Thank you for watching and subscribe. I swear to God, this is the only time I ever get to say this, so subscribe and like. I'm watching you, don't try me. Pernicious Indigos, a collab between Cute Lemon and Pax Piper. Go check out the fic below. A Dream SMP Cyberpunk AU fic. Characters include Technoblade and Wilbur Soot. Characters mentioned, Tommy Innit, Carl Jacobs, Filza, and Dream. Trigger warnings include dehumanization, scientific experiments on humans, torture, blood, mild gore, gunshot wounds, medical procedures, drugs, and mind control. Hope you enjoy the fic. Caffeine running wild through his veins, Techno sucked in a breath and impatiently adjusted his lab coat, his long coral strands moving to the howling wind's rhythm, the bottles on his belt clinking against one another, the surrounding sea of neon produced purples and blues from the city enveloped him while he kept walking on the roof's creaking tiles, the storm of thoughts invading his mind, nearing his destination he confirmed the absence of unwanted attention once again, then jumping down from the top of the neighbor's gaslight store, graciously and softly landing on the sleek bitumen gauze tubes rattling bottles of alcohol in the first aid kit that remained safely strapped to his back. The alleyway was entirely devoid of suspicious activities, a dead, mute silence raining on the environment. A few steps ahead of him, a lamp post faintly flickered back to life, its old yellowed hues casting a light on a seemingly abandoned building. The faraway cry of the sky train screeches straight into his ears. The tall man quickly follows the blinking light like a moth to the flame. The shadows on the, the narrowing brick walls camouflage his shadow. As soon as he steps through the back door to the kitchen of Phil's restaurant, the smell of a burnt metal assailing his nose and he winces, a shiver running down his spine. Bottles of controid littered one of the tables, drops of blood pursuing their trail. Draped by the darkness that shadowed the room, Wilbur automatically raised his head, distracted by the commotion, only to exhale a pained sigh of relief once he noticed the identity of the newcomer, messily throwing back his broken sky light onto the plush bench he was sitting on. I got him, he huffed, a stupid exhausted smile etching onto his face, pale quivering fingers clutching his still bleeding thigh. <laughs> Also got the confirmation that the government is up to some pretty wild shit. Nothing new. You're the biggest idiot I've seen on this side of the oxide will. Techno retorted lowly, worried creases forming on his forehead. You just had to get shot in the thigh. I just fixed, huh? 
He stated impassively, unsurprised yet still troubled by the other's injury. A crazed look in his iris as Wilbur snorted. A wild chestnut colored mane, a complete mess, debris, and dust flakes stuck into some of his curls. <laughs> My bad, the thief spoke in a sing song, shrugging. Still, a simple thank you or congratulations would be accepted nonetheless, Salyver Knife. He stated, toying with the cap of one of the capsules. The bright orange pills swirled around in its confines. Unfazed by his title, his acolyte approached him, calmly getting to work, completely transforming a corner of the retro-themed diner into his workplace. Wrenching the elastic off his tattooed wrist in a frantic motion, Techno rapidly tied his pink hair into a ponytail, his treasure box soon landing next to Wilbur's pile of glass fragments. Contrary, huh? Techno hum pensively gloved hands cutting into cloth and delicately palpitating around the wound. The brunette hissed as he squirmed uncomfortably. Stop moving, the medic instructed, gently disinfecting the gushing injury. I vaguely remember hearing political generals whispering about it in the academy hallways past midnight. Does it have any ties to this lupus that was mentioned in the research document you previously collected from Oshotanik's government base? He inquired, a pair of tweezers now in between his fingers. Wilbur frowned in contemplation, biting his lower lip. Lost in thought, he stole a wipe and rubbed his palm clean, the precious white sheet now drenched in crimson. He cleared his throat then clenched his fist. Anyone who consumes lupus is eligible for the reception of cortisone prescriptions, he recited from memory, growing disturbed, his voice barely pensable. According to Dr. Jacob's paper, lupus was successfully obtained from Earth's deepest internal layer, the inner core, a few years ago. While human testing was originally not intended, prime leader's dream orchestrated it on one sole unnamed subject. He explained, sniffling distractedly. Careful, this will sting a bit. The spy mumbled in response, calculating, before plunging his tweezers into the mix of flesh and steel. A stream of dolor included cries followed suit, currently extracting the bullet. I'll rewire everything once it's gone, he steadily clarified, his tool meeting something rigid. There. Fuck, tech, that was far from being a tiny bit, dumbass. Wilbur whined, gritting his teeth. He coughed, slightly annoyed. Sorry, you're lucky, Will. It grazed part of the computer, but you'll survive. No amputation on today's schedule. It should stitch itself back together in less than a week. The surgeon chuckles somberly. <laughs> Lupus is a lilac-colored precious stone cultivated directly from the planet and constitutes one of its prized rare resources. Controid is pharmaceutically produced. Got it? He said, urging his friend to pursue the establishment of his findings. Glinting through obscurity, the projectile now lay onto the dinner table, immobile, being cradled by the vital liquid. Armed with a minuscule portable welder, Techno efficaciously connected the broken wires together. Sparks flying around, electricity renewing its vitality through the system. The elder released a relieved sigh, sensing the mobility waking up in his limb. The medic patched everything up in a flash, then covered the wound with multiple gauze. <laughs> Thank the stars, the brunette breathed out before resuming the weight of the world onto his shoulders once more. Results were shattering, to say the least. The victim developed strange, intricate abilities as soon as they ingested the parts of the newfound crystal. Data 
indicates that his temper illustrated itself through natural disasters, raw and intense emotions such as anger, disbelief, outrage, grief, and pain caused a tsunami to take place near the Oceanic southern eastern borders. Torrential rains suspiciously took place during the election segments, provoking extreme damaging floods across the Oxai. As if struck by lightning, his nerves catching fire, Cybernice stopped moving, latching onto Wilbur's words, his utterness, a lifeline to his innocence. The connections were getting tighter as if constricting his throat, robbing him of his oxygen particles. The individual in question reflects the Earth's greatest powers, though it comes as a hefty sentence. He presently cannot reach certain heights and altitudes and needs to constantly remain close to the ground, as well as freezing temperatures triggering a body shutdown, Wilbur explained, disgusted by his own revelations. I suppose it doesn't take 10 PhDs to figure out that Cortroid directly derives from control, huh? Based on the ingredients alone, paired with lupus, Cotroid allows the first person a lupus-infected individual encounters and interacts with to mind control them while the drug's compounds are effective. The nation's child, Techno whispered, concerned, breathless, loose locks of rose-hued hair hiding the desperate and free floating in his eyes. Livid, Wilbur made a questionable noise, unsure about Technoblade's insinuations. Techno, what, what the hell do you mean? He spluttered, a single tear cast fit gating down his scarred cheek. Techno shook his head, refusing reality's truth. Tommy, Tommy's the nation's child, the heir to Oceanic's throne, and by consequent dream, dreams, dreams project. 